I'm Mary Michaels with Live Well Sioux Falls and welcome to the Live Well Health Feed, the health show that's designed to feed your mind with helpful health information. I have a great guest today. It's my coworker, Morgan Vanderzee. Hello. So Morgan and I are the Live Well Sioux Falls team uh, in the Sioux Falls Health Department, and Morgan is also a registered dietitian. So I thought mm -hmm. it'd be great to bring her in today because March is National Nutrition Month. It is. So my who favorite doesn't want to celebrate good food, right? Absolutely. Good healthy food. Absolutely. Well, maybe a little treat now and then. Well, everything in moderation. Exactly. Makes you appreciate it more, right? Yeah, exactly. So you know we're still fairly early in the year, so people still might be working on those New Year's resolutions they mm -hmm. said, or maybe they got off track and it's time to get back on track. The warmer weather is here and people yes. are thinking about being outside. So this is a great time to be talking about how we should be eating and, and easy ways to do that so that it's not so overwhelming. I think because people sometimes right. just think like, oh, if, it's, if I eat healthy, it takes too much work or it's too expensive. And so we're going to debunk all of those myths for you today. So Definitely. let's, so you've got, I know what that is, it's <laughs> the My Plate. So explain the My Plate and how this can help people adapt a healthy diet. Right, so lots of times New Year's resolutions are very, very specific, they're very restrictive, and they're very short-lived. So March is a really great time to just circle back, stick to basics, and half of your plate should be produce. Just half of it right off the bat. Let's not smother it in gravies, not sprinkle sugar over it, more veggies than fruits, but these are really what should be in everyone's like staple meal. And that's gonna help you feel full, that helps your body just function so much better. People run better when they have a high produce intake. Whether it's canned, fresh, or frozen, a combination makes it more accessible. And it's also easier just to have on hand so you don't have to go to the store every day. But that's always what I stress right away, looking at this half your plate. That takes up half that real estate and crowds out these heavier foods that sometimes we get too many calories from. And so then coming over here, we've got a good section of protein. It's a little less than 25% of what your plate should be. So here you're filling up, you're having that really light, really wholesome meal, and then moving on to your grains so that you're not eating those heavy things. And, and a lot of times grains are really rich. You put sauces and gravies and everything on them. So then maybe ending your meal with these. So you're eating them for the flavor and for the taste rather than to feel full because sometimes this crowds everything else out on your plate. Sure. And then whether you do milk or yogurt, having a serving, couple servings of dairy a day is always a great option. So this is something really you can use every meal. Mm -hmm. So you think about breakfast, and people might be initially thinking, well, veggies for breakfast? What are you talking about? But omelets, right? Absolutely. Or, you know, wraps. Other ways, uh, yeah, wraps. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, you can have lunch for breakfast or dinner for breakfast Definitely. or those leftovers, depending on how your day's running. Talk about grains. I know, you know, people obviously know what grains are. You're talking mm -hmm. about, you know, in general, you think about breads and rice and pasta, but mm -hmm. what are the right types of grains that people should be looking for? So nine times out of 10, I want your grains to be whole grains. And that simply means you're eating the whole part of the plant. So whether it's oatmeal or whole wheat bread or whole wheat pasta, those darker colors are gonna be a good indication that that's gonna be better for you. And that's because the fiber and some of the other things haven't been taken out of it. And so it just helps your system run that much better. Um, whole grains help you feel full with less total calories too. And so it just, it treats your system a lot nicer. And the reason I recommend that people eat their grains last is because sometimes they're such a staple and and we crave them they're easy mm -hmm. energy they're so good that we just tend to overeat them when we're just eating mindlessly so just being a little more Great intentional point. with this can be so helpful and and I love recommending people think about their my plate when they go to buffets or holiday Gosh. meals because if half of your plate has fruits and vegetables that dictates what else you get on that line versus getting into the end of the line and seeing some healthy things and you're like oh, gosh I don't have any room right um, so just kind of setting yourself up for success versus regretting it later so this is a, it's a good segue so we talk about the size of real estate as you said dedicated mm -hmm. to the proteins and grains so let's talk about portion sizes because I think a lot of times people might know what they should eat but our estimate of like what is a proper serving right. of you know some brown rice or quinoa or you know mm -hmm. bread and, and same with meat I mean you know we're midwesterners so we go out and we have our, our big steaks and everything for dinner so let's talk a little bit about protein sizes and or portion sizes and how can people 
estimate those in easy ways if they're not in a place where they've got a measuring cup or mm -hmm. a food scale or something like that? What tips for portion size? Right, so everyone always takes their hands with them, and so that's the reference that I stick with. You're not always carrying a tennis ball or a deck of cards with you, and so typically this is a better reference. Um, men usually underestimating it, because if I say the size of my palm is three to four ounces, mm -hmm. some guys have those big man hands, be realistic like you know you know your body frame so for protein looking about the thickness and the area of your palm and that's going to be a serving of protein if you know you're going to have a big steak dinner for supper maybe having a vegetarian lunch or something lighter throughout the day just because you can flex it it doesn't have to be rigid you don't have to eat specific things at right. specific times it's just knowing what you ate the rest of the day or the rest of the week. If you had several cheat days in a row, it's time to work in some lighter yeah. foods. <laughs> so then a lot of times too, when we're talking about like greens, we're talking about like a half cup serving mm -hmm. or a cup serving. So what's a good way to right. eyeball that? You know, whether you're cooking at home or you're out. Right, so same concept. Men, if you work with your hands and you've got big meaty hands, we're gonna lowball it. But most standard hands are about a cup. If you chop off your thumb, you've got four fingers and that's your reference. So your first finger, is a fourth a cup, half a cup, three fourths, and then a full cup okay. here. And that's a really good reference as far as getting those measurements. So two cups of veggies oh, okay. at yeah, a meal, yeah. two yeah, fifths, yeah, yeah. and then grains, we're looking about that third half a cup range. So just starting there. That's not to say you can't have a second serving, but when you put all your servings on your plate at one time, they're going to get eaten. Yeah. And so just slowing things down, give your stomach some time to tell you that it's full and then going from there. Now this can be really helpful too when you're yes. shopping, thinking about um, planning your meals, but also thinking about that portion size because right. sometimes we get a container of food. I mean, okay, use something like chips or mm -hmm. you know a, a, a box, and it's like, oh, well, if I have the whole bag, that's the serving. But right. this becomes really important, doesn't it? Yes, and so that's where these can be really overwhelming. So we just try to break it down really simply. We don't need to memorize or know everything. I don't need people counting protein and carbs and fat. I just need them to kind of recognize what they're putting into their systems. So first and foremost, we're looking at the serving size because none of these numbers along the side make any difference if you're not eating this portion size. If you're eating more or less, those numbers are gonna be more and less. And if you eat the whole container, we take all of these numbers here times eight. Right. And sometimes that can be a little shocking with things like chips, ice cream, that kind of stuff. Well, it's a small container. It's a concentrated container. <laughs> right, right. And so um, if you're knowing that you're going to have a big meal in the evening, if you're trying to avoid any certain thing due to dietary restrictions, just starting here and then comparing everything out is going to make it a lot easier. I always recommend that people look at the grams and what's actually in it versus percentages because these percentages are based on a 2,000 calorie diet. And most of us just don't burn 2,000 calories a day. That's, you know, your typical young adult male who's reasonably active, um, you or I, we're probably not hitting that unless we're really working out or, or doing a lot of manual labor. Mm -hmm. um, and so that can be a common misunderstanding. Great information. And when we come back, we're gonna put all of this to practice and share a great recipe that you can use for any time of day. And we'll tell you the health benefits as we make it. So stay tuned, we'll be right back. A safe and effective COVID-19 vaccination is a critical part of reducing illnesses, hospitalizations, and deaths. South Dakota healthcare providers are working together to distribute the vaccine to as many South Dakotans as possible. Vaccination is the first step to ending this pandemic and getting back to normal. Do your part to keep your community safe. To find out where you can get vaccinated, visit covid.sd.gov. Welcome back to the Live Well Health Feed. I'm here again with my coworker, Morgan Vanderzee, and we are going to put all that great information that Morgan was telling us about nutrition as part of Nutrition Month to good use right now. And we're gonna make a smoothie. And I think actually smoothies are such a versatile food item, I guess, because you can use them breakfast, lunch, dinner, snacks. I mean, it's just great for on the go, something kids can help you make. Absolutely. Um, if you're trying to help your kids get some more fruits and veggies in their diet. So mm -hmm. this is gonna be a good one. It's got an, an, an ingredient that I've never put in a smoothie, smoothie before. So okay, <laughs> we're gonna let Morgan take this off and we're gonna make this great heart healthy blueberry smoothie. 
And so we're gonna talk a little bit about the ingredients that are going in and why they're good for you. Okay, so Absolutely. let's start off. So what do we have in here already? So we just pureed some oats and it's just a very simple way of making what's called oat flour. So it's just blend it all up. That way when you're drinking your smoothie, you're not going to get a big chunk of oats. It's not gonna get stuck in your teeth. It's gonna blend up a little more. And it actually gives it this really sweet, like warm, hearty flavor is one of my favorite smoothie ingredients. Yeah, it's, I mean, I've done flaxseed before mm -hmm. in a smoothie, but I've never done oats. So so those are the oats there, right? So just yep. like your basic canister, quick oat kind of thing. Right, or? quick oats work really well because they're already a little bit smaller pieces, but you can do any kind of oats, throw them in there. Um, steel cut might be a little grainy, so your rolled oats is probably going to be easier for your blender to catch and kind of shred. Uh, if you want to cheat and just do oat flour, it's the same thing. Okay. So you've got the options there. All right, good. Okay, so then what's next? So after we have this all made, we're just going to dump all our ingredients in. Usually you do your solid ones at the bottom and then your yogurt and milk on top. And then we're just going to put it all together. Okay, ingredient one. So what do we have here? We just have a frozen banana. And bananas are good for? They're good for a lot of reasons. They're going to add that sweet, creamy flavor without all of that extra added sugar. Um, they've got some potassium in there and then also fiber. Awesome. Mm-hmm. And frozen, so then if you're using frozen ingredients, I mean, you can always add ice to your smoothies too, but this right. is a, a good way just to use. Yep, use one less ingredient. I don't have to worry about the ice. And especially when my bananas are starting to turn or are, at, are perfectly at the color that I like them to be at, then I just peel them quick and throw them in a container and freeze them. So Smart. much easier. Okay, blueberries. Kind of a superfood, right? Absolutely. Super heart healthy, packed with antioxidants. Um, a lot of dietitians will tell you to eat all your colors. And so each color has a different special nutritional value for it. And so getting that really well-rounded diet by eating the rainbow is, is a great way to eat well without studying, without calculating. I'm getting this much vitamin, this much XYZ. Okay, good tip. Okay, so next we have... Yogurt. Okay. So now we're adding our probiotics, we're adding um, that dairy, that calcium. It's also creamy and going to give your um, yogurt, or your yogurt, your uh, smoothie a really great texture. It's and got some protein. And yogurt is one of those things you have to be really careful and look at your label like we were looking at before because of added sugars. Right. So making sure that you have that low sugar count in your yogurt because, yeah, you just don't need all those added sugars. Absolutely. And honestly, you can buy unsweetened yogurt and then just add honey, add vanilla, add fruit, and then you can make it your own and you know exactly what's going into it. Good point. Uh, plain yogurt, you can put some sweetened granola on it and then you're still getting that treat without all of that extra sugar because that makes it a little more of a dessert than a staple. Right. Okay, and then lastly, we have Ooh, missed a little just some soy milk. So soy milk is closest to dairy milk as far as nutritional value and protein and and all of the stuff that's in it. But any any milk that you prefer is going to be great, whether you like dairy or whether dairy doesn't sit with you. Almond milk is a great low calorie option. Um, cashew milk is kind of sweet and kind of fun. You can put oatmeal oat milk right in your smoothie to really complement that oatmeal flavor. So you've got a lot of great options. All right, so we've got a little bit of everything here. We've got our fruit, we've got dairy, we've got protein and fiber and vitamins and all kinds of good stuff. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna take a little break, we're gonna blend this up and we're gonna show you the finished product when we return. So stay tuned, we'll be right back with the Live Well Health Feed. Hi, I'm Dr. Maurer from Falls Community Health here today to talk to you about keeping your kids healthy and active. It is recommended kids get at least 60 minutes of physical activity every day. Other important guidelines are to limit screen time to a maximum of two hours and avoid sugary beverages. I encourage parents to be healthy role models for their kids by getting out and being active along with them. If you have any questions about nutrition or exercise, contact your physician or Falls Community Health. Welcome back to the Live Well Healthy. This is going to be the best part of the segment because now we get to taste these delicious smoothies. I totally this agree. This awesome purple color. I mean, it just looks so much fun. It's, and I think it'd be really fun for kids, you know, something Absolutely. really different to get them well, to you, take. You associate it with their favorite movie characters or cartoon characters. If you throw any sort of spinach or kale in it, then it's all of a sudden a Hulk smoothie or anything that they can relate to and kind of take ownership when they're adding stuff to the blender. It's just, it's great. Awesome. Okay, so... 
We saw what was going in. Mm -hmm. So how did we do when we're looking at my plate? How did we do with our recipe? We did really well. So the goal with each meal or snack is to hit three of these categories. And we were able to get our fruits in from the banana and the blueberries. We got some grains in from blending up that oatmeal. And then our dairy from uh, both the soy milk, which counts as a serving of dairy, and then the yogurt. And it would be really easy to hit the vegetables by that spinach or kale. Absolutely. That in there. When you blend it up, you can't taste it. So it's a great way to sneak some veggies in, whether it's for you or kids. So um, you can find this recipe and other recipes on our website, which is www.livewellsoupfalls.org. You can also follow us on social media, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram to check out recipes and other health tips beyond just Nutrition Month. And so as we wrap up today, Morgan, thanks for all the time and the extra expertise and now Absolutely. we're going to taste so cheers, cheers to nutrition month mm -hmm. thanks for joining us and join us next time on the live well health feed